With February being Heart Health Month in the United States, many of the doctors are recommending that patients have tests done for their heart that are f for early detection. Uh -huh. But it's come to light that this isn't such a great idea if a person's not having symptoms. So why would there be a downside to having these tests and getting possibly false positive results and having them lead to other invasive procedures and exactly. tests and maybe getting complications from those? Yeah, we get into trouble easily here because we want to know in advance if somebody has heart disease, Vicki. And so we're trying to do all the tests we can that might save a life, save a heart attack, so someone doesn't have to go through that process. And we have the feeling that if they're abnormalities that are fine on their tests, that surely they must mean something. Well, and especially like everybody gets an EKG before surgery, for example. Yeah, it's a routine, but you know, Vicki, there are no studies that have been done that show that if you do an EKG before surgery, that it saves lives or it prevents heart attacks. And contrary to common sense, which would say, what? Of course you'd want to do an EKG. In fact, if you don't, it's malpractice. And they requ hospitals require it. And it's because they want to do the right thing, and they're afraid to not do the test because they'll think they'll be doing something that's negligent. But can't you detect if there's an arrhythmia? Wouldn't that be a good thing to know yeah, about? Yeah, but you could take someone's pulse or listen to their heart. <laughs> you know, you get the same thing. And I'm not saying that there aren't times when it's a good idea to do screening tests, but I do screening tests on my patients most of the time when I feel there's a special reason to. You know, they have a problem. They're short of breath. They're having chest pain. Their pulses are so irregular. So that's when they, they have the symptoms. So they have symptoms. You know something's wrong, and you <laughs> wish that they didn't have all that, but you want to be sure that you're not missing something because they've already shown a warning sign. Okay, now when a, when a patient ends up with a, a positive result, like there's something wrong, uh -huh. then many times that leads to some of the other tests. So, what so there's some something the wrong on What you're saying is when there's something wrong on a test, it leads to doing other tests. Your EKG shows an abnormal finding on the EKG. What does it mean? Well, let's do a stress test. Well, it's borderline. It shows a few changes that we worry about. So let's do the next test. So we'll, now we'll do a stress test doing a, a, a nuclear scan or with ultrasound. Or uh, maybe we'll do a CT scan of the chest looking for calcium. You find more changes. And eventually you may wind up doing a coronary arteriogram. And when you look at all these tests together, they're all showing things that are not normal. The coronary arteriogram is showing blockages that may be up to 75, 80, or even 90%. And you're going, wow, there's something wrong here. Most people think that's a good thing that they found that because now we can go in and ream it out or put in a stent or something. Well, that's the problem, see? In the absence of symptoms, even if you have an abnormal coronary arteriogram with major blocks, there's no data showing that that should be either treated with a stent or with a bypass. So in other words, we're using common sense to think, well, that sounds like a good idea. We, we do that all the time in medicine because we don't have the answers. But that doesn't mean that it's the right thing to do. This time it's the wrong thing to do. And so we look at this heart screening month that we have here in February and all these tests we can do, the EKG, the carotid ultrasound. Echocardiogram. Uh, sure, the, the, the other kinds of stress tests that are done with uh, radioactive materials and the CT scans and even coronary arteriograms. You've got to be very careful because they'll lead you to the wrong, the wrong answer. And some of these have a lot of radiation like the CT scan. Oh, or they inject dye, which 10% of the time is going to damage your kidneys to some small extent. And maybe affect your thyroid? It may affect your thyroid as well. So do you really want these tests to be done? The question really is the wrong one. And I think people need to know what these tests do too, like when they do an arteriogram or an oh, angiogram. Well they're, they're threading a catheter from your groin uh -huh. that goes all up to the, the artery. Yeah, and then all through your heart to get to goes the up the aorta, it goes to the coronary arteries, and then they put it in the coronary arteries. Uh, it's it's a it's Very it's not invasive. the safest thing in the world to do, but and sometimes we find that it's really giving us useful information too. So most of the time, these tests are not a good idea because they get us into trouble. You have to know your patient. You have to listen. You have to care. If you'll do that, there's a good chance that what's going to happen is you're going to wind up. <laughs> using your common sense as well as the science that tells you when these tests are really useful and when they're not. But in the absence of symptoms, 
they're not the best thing to do. And many times the drug companies and the medical device companies are encouraging the people that own the tests. testing equipment. A lot of the doctors own this equipment. And that's where you find that we've reported this many times on the site. A little conflict of interest. This conflict of interest, and they tend to do it more so than if someone else owns the equipment. So it becomes a financial thing that's inherent in our society. So heart screening, in the presence of symptoms, yes. In the absence of symptoms, best to be more conservative.